I came here in 40, in New York in 46, and, and that was the first year that the program was started. And the, the York Chamber of Commerce was the people who were responsible for organizing this league. It was the league, is what it was. Cornhusker State League is what it was. A man by the name of Duncan who had, he was uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I became acquainted with him during the war when I was playing. See, I played during the war down, I played at everybody's, at the, and he asked me what, uh, if I would uh, consider managing the team. Well, here I am, I'm only 21 years old, you see. And I knew that a lot of the people that were being involved were old experienced hands, you see. But I says, yeah, and they talked me into it. And uh, the philosophy in, at that particular time by the Chamber of Commerce was that they would not pay outright cash for people who played. It cost 50 cents to get into the game. The Chamber of Commerce would buy balls and bats and stuff, and then what was left would be split up amongst the players. See, that's the way it was. And everybody else in the whole league, Aurora, Geneva, Strasburg, uh, they were all paying. And they were paying uh, for money from donation from the business people. Well, the York Chamber of Commerce did not want to do that. I can remember going into a tavern here in York and looking up on the wall here of the huge mirror behind the bar and they would be hundreds, I never counted, of dollars pasted up on the wall or on that mirror betting on the ball games. Now that worked fine as long as York won. But I can see right away that we were in trouble because we couldn't buy ball. We did. We did manage to collect enough money through donations and what have you to uh, hire the pitching. And we got that out of the University of Nebraska. And uh, some of those guys would slip out here and throw for us. And uh, the going rate was about, uh, oh, I'd say anyways from 75 to $150, and that was a lot of money. Oh, I can remember uh, walking out of the, had a good game, and I can remember walking out of the gate and somebody sticking a $50 bill in my pocket. That's the way it was. Were you a player manager? Yes, for two years I was, yeah. And then uh, things, evolved to the point that the, the people in York, or a certain group of people in York, wanted uh, a better ball team and a better representation. And this was accomplished by uh, firing me. <laughs> Which was all right, because I'd had, you know, it, was, it wasn't pleasant. One winter day, I was sitting at home, and Don Norbert, who managed the Strongsburg uh, Swedes, he uh, drove up in front and it was a blizzard, light blizzard, and knocked on the door and he said, Don, how would you like to play ball this year with Strongsburg? And I said, well, I don't know. I think I was going to play here in New York. He said, no, I visit with Floyd Bond and some of the uh, people involved and they don't want you. <laughs> I said, good, I'll be up there. And the first ball game was uh, was in Strongsburg, and the only way I had to get to Strongsburg was on a Cushman motor scooter. I took off on my motor scooter with my Strongsburg uniform on and, and went to Strongsburg. And uh, I had a good game. And after the ball game, why, uh, Don Norberg, the manager, and uh, C.M. Johnson, uh, he was on the board. He says, they told me to come here. They want to talk to me. He says, Don, we can't have you coming up here on a Cushman motor scooter at night because you might not make it. Well, I says, that's probably right. Well, I'll tell you what, you come up here tomorrow and we're going to get you a car. So C.M. Johnson was, uh, had the Chrysler Plymouth dealership. And so they just was, this was all by handshake. They gave me a 42 Plymouth. Now, a 42 Plymouth in 46 was a pretty good car. And it was 
It belonged to the banker in Strasbourg. Well, they gave me that car, and I gave them $900 of playing time. And that's how I got my first car. They'd built this new lighted ballpark, and can you imagine? Uh, I can remember going up there when there was 2,000 people. And I can remember playing baseball up here when there was darn near that many. Like I say, there was no television. That's the only place people had to go. And I can tell you what eventually happened. It got to the point that they couldn't meet their payroll. So that ruined a lot of semi-pro stuff.